So I'd like to everyone. I'd just like to start by saying, buckle up, this might be a bumpy ride. Um, it might be a little controversial, but I, I had these ideas. I've run it by a bunch of the submitters who I know agree with me, so I know it's well vetted. OK. Actually, uh, this is a continuation, kind of, from last year's speech. Um, I don't even remember what I talked about, but anything anyone remembers is that I crashed my boat because I became obsessed with fishing. Um, <laughs> And one of the things I, I kept getting told is, are you going to keep your boat? Are you going to sell your boat? What's your, what's your plan with the boat uh, when you get it back? So just to give you guys a recap, I crashed my boat in November of 2016. I was supposed to get it back February, March period. I gave my speech in August, and I thought I should be getting it back soon when I gave my speech. I think I even mentioned it in that speech. Um, I ended up getting it back in the middle of December. So it was 13 months I was, uh, had time to reflect. Um, in that time, I started to, uh, I, I came up to a realization which became the uh, topic of this uh, speech. What happened is I realized it's not just fishing. I have a problem becoming obsessive about things. So whatever it is, I would, it, just because the fishing stopped, I moved on to something else. Um, so just getting rid of the boat would mean I would basically just treat the symptom and I would move on to a, a bigger mistake. Uh, so I'm going to talk about what treating the symptom means. Uh, what you guys see here is a beautiful field, mashallah. This is God's creation. What I used to see is this, right? Uh, I would sneeze starting uh, middle of February, and I would not stop till November. Uh, so I maybe got two months of like breathing out of my nose. At one point, uh, somebody turned me on to this stuff called Afrin, where you would spray it in your nose, and it would um, basically you would not sneeze or sniffle or anything anymore. Um, what I realized with this is it was symptomatic. It treats the symptom. And what that means is you would not sneeze or sniffle anymore, but you still had the allergy. It actually made the allergy feel even worse. Um, so the sneezing, that's God's way of getting this, this stuff out of your system. Uh, just breathing it in was not a good thing. Um, it got into my lungs. It caused asthma. It was a big, it was a big problem. And then when the afrin would wear off, uh, it was like breaking the dam, so the water would just get flowing. Um, not to dwell on that, but uh, what ended up happening is there was another submitter who had uh, allergies worse than I did. And one year I noticed she doesn't have allergies anymore. So I asked her, well, what are you taking to cure your allergies? And she said, no, what I did is I figured out what I was doing wrong, and I fixed it. And I said, subhanAllah, that is amazing. Like, we, we, I mean, this was not a time where I was like, perfect happiness, what is that? This is something that I had to actually now apply what I had learned to my life. Um, so I started to reflect. And at this point, my allergies had gotten considerably worse throughout time. Um, so it, it came one year, uh, allergies were starting, and I said, you know what? This is going to be the year I'm going to inshallah fix myself. Uh, I figured out some major, major flaws that were causing those allergies. Uh, I still get allergies once, maybe twice a year uh, for a couple hours, subhanAllah. To me, this is a miracle, considering if you I talk with my family how bad my allergies used to be. Um, this is God's promise, right? When he gets sick, he heals me. God is the only one who can heal. You cannot take a pill to fix your problems. Uh, we're going to come back to this as well. <laughs> All right. We're going to be meme heavy in this. If you don't get the memes, uh, come talk to me at the break, inshallah. This is the meme for allergies. I just thought if I start with this, you would get it better. But this is the I feel it, kid, allergies. <laughs> All right, moving on to the bumpy part. Um, so let's start with this. Anything good that happens to you is from God. Anything bad that happens to you is from you. We have sent you as a messenger to the people, and God suffices as a witness. So keep this in mind. Uh, the good things that happen to us are from God, and the bad things that happen to the people on earth are, is because they disobey God. All right, so this is the solution to uh, the school shootings. Is let's arm every teacher, turn them into John Rambo, and this next time there's a school shooter, this is, a, this is, this is not going to solve any problems. Most of my teachers in high school, I would not want to give them a gun to. Either they were angry or they were incompetent. Uh, I would not want these people with a gun. So this is exactly what I'm talking This is the mentality of most uh, gun owners in America, and I want to actually talk against this, is uh, the gun is not going to protect you, OK? People 
use this excuse all the time. It's, I want guns because I need protection. I live in a dangerous world. If you put your faith in that gun, it's just like me putting that faith in that afrin or in that pill. The gun is not going to protect you no matter what. Uh, most people who own guns use them for self-defense inside their homes, end up having the gun, either you know, a kid finds it and uh, fires it off at themselves or at other people. Um, you know, these are people, I'm not talking about people who put it in the safe and lock it up. I'm talking about people who put it in a nightstand under their bed. Uh, those guns are used uh, against them rather than uh, for their protection. So it ends up doing more harm than good. That's the last bad thing I'm going to say about guns. I feel like I always have to put on my hazmat suit to go talk about uh, uh, pro-gun control, you know, against gun control. Uh, all gun laws are whack. <laughs> yes, this is going to seem crazy to some people. Uh, your government cannot protect you, okay? This is, this is the bottom line of this whole section here, is the government cannot provide you with protection. People have turned the government, they go to the government for, for safety, they go to the government for their provisions, people go to the government for healing, and they've turned the government into a god, they, they, a source besides God. And you think Satan's incompetent, you know, I, I'm happy I'm giving this speech in Washington, D.C. Your government is the most incompetent. Um, they cannot provide safety for you, and we see it, they keep passing gun laws and it keeps uh, backfiring on them. So the more gun laws you pass, the worse it gets. Um, I can't tell you why, it's because people, I, I can't tell you why, it's because people put their faith in the government uh, to, to, to help them, and uh, the government can't, they can't. There's nothing they can pass to keep people from being evil. We came here to see Satan's uh, display of him as a god, and that's what it is. Now, people keep saying, hey look, 30 years ago we didn't have these issues. And it's true, 30 years ago, I remember being in school, there was one story about one guy in Texas uh, who went in a bell tower and shot some people. That was the only story we had um, about any sort of uh, mass shooting. Uh, new era happened. And now the distinction between God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom becomes more and more evident every single day. We see it every single day that uh, we we're going in the wrong direction as far as, as civilization, um, whereas uh, those who remain in God's kingdom get to benefit from the protection that we have and not go in that direction, mashallah. Um, God is the only protector, right? Just keep this in mind. Your guns, your government, none of these are going to help be able to protect you. Okay, you have to be sensitive to people's point of view. Uh, this is what I always like to post, and it's, it's actually an anti-point uh, of view. So uh, it says you have your point of view and I have mine. Yeah, so th there's nothing that's going to help uh, protect you. Is freedom more important than safety? Yes, okay. God grants everybody freedom. Uh, if you don't believe me, go to the back of the Quran. Uh, I think it's Appendix 23. Uh, there's a section on what price a great nation and freedom of speech, freedom of religion, all these freedoms that God has granted us. Um, people can come here and be whatever religion they want. The second the government steps in and takes those away, uh, it's in the name of, for your safety, right? The, Hitler went and eliminated the Jews for the safety of the rest of the people that lived there. Uh, this, there I keep seeing it on Facebook all the time, let's get rid of all Muslims because they're dangerous to society. Now, you guys are going to say, hey, we're submitters, but they don't know the difference. If they can't tell the difference between like, one gun and another, they're not going to tell the difference between submission and Islam. You pray five times a day, you know, they want to get rid of your religion. Um, so the government wants to step in and take away freedoms. That's how we are as human beings. We like to oppress each other. We were just talking about this. Um, but... The reality of it is, uh, I have a note here, um, there was a very comprehensive assault weapons ban put in in 1994, okay, just to give you guys an example. Um, this was better than anything else, more comprehensive than anything we've ever had in place. Uh, from 1994 to 2004, it was a 10-year lifespan, they were going to see how it goes and then get rid of it. Why did they get rid of it? 1994, they instead this, Oklahoma City bombing happened, and then the World Trade Center bombing happened. And then the Columbine school shooting happened, where kids got hands on their guns illegally. 
And then 9-11 uh, happened. They said, look, we banned guns. People are ramming airplanes into buildings. They're blowing buildings up. This is not doing any good. We are not able to provide safety for people. Um, yeah, so safety comes from God. Freedom comes from God, right? So you got to keep this in mind. These are both things that God bestows upon us, okay? And we cannot take safety, we cannot rely on something else for safety. Uh, it took me 10 years. Uh, I think some people in here are, are, are uh, witnesses of that, where I insisted on seatbelts have to be worn. And now I'm handing out these, uh, if you guys want them, I'll, have, I'll give you guys the link. These keys you put in the thing so you don't have to wear your seatbelt so your car doesn't ding at you every five minutes. Seatbelts don't save your life, right? God saves your life. You can wear them, you can not wear them. Uh, be in God's kingdom. It's a crazy thought. I know this. Uh, but if you're in God's kingdom, you don't have to worry about any of the nonsense uh, that people try to enforce on you, that you have to do this to be safe. Um, so neither guns nor government will protect you. Only God will protect you. Sever your dependence on everything else other than God. Okay? And if anyone thinks that God cannot support him in this life and in the hereafter, let him turn completely to his creator in heaven and sever his dependence on anyone else. He will then see that this plan eliminates anything that bothers him. Okay, I'm sorry for the UK folks. You guys are become the jokes of the uh, United States and all the gun guys. Uh, it says, hey, America, gets acid attack. Why don't you get stabbed? Ban guns, nail bomb goes off. So then you'll be safe, gets hit by a truck like us. <laughs> right? This is what happens in the UK. When I made this meme, it was, it was uh, in January. Okay. Statistics came out where everybody in London has apparently turned into Jack the Ripper. I don't know what's going on over there. But their statistics for stat they don't have guns over there. Okay? So... Uh, people have turned, people are evil. They have turned to other means. And what they have turned to is uh, they're, they're uh, taking knives and they're stabbing people. So they have banned knives, okay? People are dying more than Chicago, more than New York, uh, where guns are used. They, they're using knives. So now they've banned knives. I don't know. Uh, do, do you guys eat your steak with a spoon now, or what do you guys do over there? <laughs> so... Uh, this, is, this is the state of the, the society, is, is people always find a way to be, uh, to be evil. Um, what are we supposed to do as far as laws? This was my question. So what is government's role? Uh, he constructed the sky and established the law. You shall not transgress the law. This is the laws that God establishes for you. Gotcha. You shall establish justice, do not violate the law. So justice should be for the sake of not victimizing people. And I want to talk about people who are taking, trying to take away those freedoms. Uh, it's the same side. They're trying to promote homosexuality, transgenders, uh, communism, uh, and this idea that you have to now call people by their pro proper pronouns or it's going to be jail time or you're going to get fired. There, there's a lot of crazy stories out there these people are trying to promote. Um, the reality of it is these people are scared of two things, and I hate to say it, but they're scared of religious people who have guns and they're scared of helicopter rides. If you don't get this meme, come talk to me uh, at the break. Uh, or maybe just don't laugh because you don't like dark humor. But... Um, <laughs> Suicide. These are people that I, I, I have loved. Oh, Kate Spade, I love looking at her stores. They're always so beautiful. And these people all committed suicide. They had everything that they all committed suicide. Jim Carrey has a great quote. I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of so they can see that it's not the answer. One in six people are on psychedelic drugs, right? Psycho, not, psych not psychedelic as in like acid. <laughs> But psychedelic is in they make you not, uh, not uh, be depressed, apparently. Uh, the, indeed, the human being is anxious, if touched by adversity, despondent, if blessed by wealth, stingy, except for the worshipers, right? This is the only way you can prevent being in that category. Happiness is a quality of the soul. Uh, no pill is going to give you that. Is this happiness? <laughs> Who knows what those pills are? You don't even have to put the name on it. Everyone knows those, that's Xanax, and that's like the anti-anxiety pill. 
This is the one thing uh, that people know. Happiness now and forever. Absolutely, God's allies have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. They are those who believe and lead a righteous life. For them, joy and happiness in this world as well as in the hereafter. God's promises your, your happiness begins here. I got this question wrong on the quiz, by the way. This is God's unchangeable law, such as the greatest triumph. Do not be saddened by their utterances. All power belongs to God. He is the hearer, the omniscient. The idea of being depressed is like being in the middle of the ocean. Taking the pill is like getting a life vest like this, and you just float around the middle of the ocean. It does not provide you with happiness. As forgive him who gives to charity and maintains righteousness and upholds the scripture, he will direct him towards happiness. But he who is stingy, though he is rich and disbelieves in the scripture, we will direct him towards misery. This is God's promise. Again, give to charity, uh, maintain righteousness, and God will direct you towards happiness. Thank you. Who was the guy in the meme uh, when it was like all rules are whack or something like that? Oh, God. I don't know. Uh, who's who's? Handlebers. <laughs> okay. We had another question because of that one, okay? Perfect. Fernand, go ahead. Okay. Mashallah. Uh, wonderful speech. Praise Thank God. You. I Mashallah. agree with like, Mashallah, like everything you said there. Uh, I just have one question because. We know that, um, how do you reconcile, like, there's a thing about, you know, trusting in God and, what, how do you reconcile trusting in God and also not testing God? So, let's say, like, you know, you have, you wear this, you use the seatbelt example. So, you know, um, what is the difference between, you know, you know, not wearing your seatbelt or locking your door or something at home? When yeah, you- that, that, that's actually much like a great question. Um, so... When you test God, I think you're doing things where you know there's a danger at the end of it. Um, so if I, if I uh, stick my hand in the fire, it's like testing God in, in a way. Uh, and, I, and I believe that. If I look at the statistics and I say, look, leaving a loaded firearm on my nightstand might not be a good thing, uh, but I'm going to do it anyway, uh, you have to just use your common sense. Uh, we've had this debate about seatbelts for a long time. It took me a while to come to that conclusion is I do my part, God does his part. There's, a, there's your intention, I think, is the most important thing. Is if you put your faith in God, uh, God's, God's going to always, always support you. Uh, Daniel was a great example, right? He got thrown in the lion's den, and uh, lion, nothing happened to him. Uh, Abraham got thrown in the fire, nothing happened to him. Uh, so God can protect you no matter what you think. Uh, is possible or not possible. But, you know, if you don't want to wear a seatbelt because you don't like seatbelts and you trust in God, that's fine. If you don't want to wear a seatbelt for the sake of not wearing the seatbelt and you don't have that trust in God, then I think that is when you're trusting, uh, you're testing God. Yeah, mashallah. So, Ali John, I think that's very important, our intention, because in our prayer we say we worship God alone and we only ask God for help. Yes. And we truly believe nothing can help us or benefit us. And Everything and everyone are under God's full control. God is running everything. So we cannot prohibit anything, but we cannot give power to any, anything. It, it, that's exactly what so I said. Yeah. No doctor, Michelle. no resources, no Michelle. medication, no seatbelt, no, uh, no alarm, no lock on the door. Nothing can protect us or help us. Uh, but these are blessings in God's hand. So God is the one who is protecting us. Mashallah. God is the one. So that intention, it should be exactly. severing our, our dependence on anything but exactly. God. Yeah, Mashallah. Mashallah. Awesome.